Before we day trade gaps, we've got to review how we look at stocks. The way most people look at a stock chart is incorrect because we're accustomed to seeing these types of line charts. And yeah, they're informative, but they don't tell us the whole story. I'll just do a great example. Let's go, by the way, what I'm using here is finance.yahoo.com. Put in any stock you want and click on this interactive chart, and this is what will come up. Okay, you can change the month here. I'm going to show you something very important for day trading gaps before we discuss day trading gaps. So let's check this out. Let's check out a stock called Fuel. Let's see its line chart. So this is the line chart for the past one month. And you can see, if you've ever taken a calculus class, this is a continuous line. But you're missing one very important piece of what happened to Fuel in the past month. And the only way you can see that piece is by changing how we graph the chart. What we want to look at is a candlestick chart. The candlestick chart shows us something we didn't see before. A huge gap, a huge space between this green candlestick and the red candlestick. Now, just a brief primer on candlesticks. Green candlesticks indicate the stock price went up during the day and red down. So in this green candlestick, if you look at the this area right here, see this open close data? You highlight the candlestick, it shows you the open and close. You see how the open is lower than the close? The open was at, at the bottom of the candlestick here, 14.23, and the close was 14.77. So it went up. For the red one, you'll see that the open is bigger than the close. Okay, so here comes something important. That space between these two candlesticks is so huge that it means that from the low of this day, which was 13.92, to the high of this day, which was 11.50, there was no trading of this stock fuel at any prices in between. So what we got is a gap. Now this is not the gap I'm going to talk about today because we need to make a distinction between a intraday gap and an intraday gap. This is an intraday gap. This is a gap that happens when the next day, let's say you're holding on to fuel, you bought fuel and you have the stock and at the end of February 19th, on the end of that day, you have a stock worth $14.77. But on the next day, you see the stock price opens at $11.07. You already lost money. That's how the gap works. There's no way to sell it off at the price that you had before because already as soon as the market opens, the stock's value has fallen. And the line chart doesn't really show this, does it? The line chart seems to indicate that you can sell it anywhere in between. But in fact, what we have is a gap. Now this is an intraday gap and we're going to be talking about this in the next couple of videos. But today I want to talk about an intraday gap, which I define as a gap that occurs at the beginning of the day, but closes itself out at the end of the day. And I'll give you a, here, let's go back to Yahoo for a second. Give you a good idea. Sorry for the wait. Yahoo is Y-H-O-O, -O, not actually Yahoo. I don't know what I was thinking. Go back to the interactive chart. So this will give you an idea of how to get there yourself if you want to use this. This is probably the best one to use. Okay, so let's look at the monthly candlestick chart of Yahoo. Do you see any gaps here? Well, you might at the beginning say, yeah, I see some gaps, like here's a gap. But that's not a gap because if you look closely, each candlestick has a little wick at the top and bottom. Some of them don't, but most of them do. Now, those indicate the highest and lowest trading prices. So if there's any overlap between the wicks of one candle and the wicks of the next day's candle, there's no gap. In fact, Yahoo has zero gaps in the past month. And you can type in almost any other stock. Let's look at Facebook. And you'll find that the majority of them don't have any gaps. Does Facebook have any gaps? Zero gaps. It looks like this one's close, but there's actually a wick up here and a wick down there. There are no gaps for most stocks for most months. What does that mean? Well, take this fact and put it together with another fact. The fact that every candlestick has a candlestick after it that touches some part of the candlestick. 
So here's a good example. The red candlestick has a green candlestick following it that's inside it. It overlaps with the red candlestick. But you're going to notice that the opening and closing prices on the, on the, okay, the closing price on February 27th is not exactly the opening price on March 2nd. Not exactly. So what that means is every day there's a gap, basically. When you are holding on to Facebook on February, let's look at a more prominent example. Um, here's a good one. Okay, on February 11th, at the end of the day, when the market closed, your Facebook stock was worth $67.51. Now, on the next day, suddenly, as the market opens, your stock is worth $67.86. So it increased. Why is this important? Well, if we know that at the very beginning of the day, we only have this little line. We don't have the whole candlestick yet. We just have the top line. But we know that the majority of candlesticks has another candlestick touching it after that day. Then we know that the stock price here on this day, February 12th, from the opening time to the closing time is some time, at some time in the day, it's going to touch the closing price on February 11th. So we know, almost surely, statistically, we know that on February 12th, the stock price is going to drop. It's going to drop after it opens. We can use that fact to, to short the stock. In this case, you would short the stock, you'd sell it, and then you buy it back later and you make a profit. And in other cases where it would be the opposite, where you'd have a uh, red and then a green, like here, you'd buy the stock and you make a profit by selling it when it touches the candlestick. So I'm going to show you exactly what your strategy needs to be. And I'm just going to give you a simple set of rules so you know how to play this. Here's what happens. On the day prior to trading, so let's call that yesterday. On yesterday, if it's a green candlestick and today as the market opens the price is higher than yesterday's closing price then what you want to do is short the stock and immediately after you want to place a limit order to buy the stock at the same price we're looking at yesterday's closing price at yesterday's closing price I don't care about grammar right now okay so what this strategy does is tells you the night before you're trading, look through all your stocks. Pretty much any stock works. Make sure you pick a stock that has a high price, otherwise your ROI is going to be too low. But look for a stock. Now, we're going to pick this stock. Now, we see it's a red candlestick, so it doesn't work for this strategy. But I'm going to show you how it works for... Let's do red first, because it's more intuitive. Sorry to go backwards a bit, but let's do it like this. I'm going to copy all this and just change a little bit of it, because you can play gaps whether the market is falling or whether it's going up. Yay. What are we changing? Okay, if it's a, it's a red candlestick and today the price is below yesterday's closing price, then buy the stock and immediately after place a limit order to sell the stock at yesterday's closing price. So you have this set of rules. These two rules will make you money pretty much any day of the week on pretty much any stock as long as you find these two conditions. So if it's a red candlestick and the market price is below the red candlestick, well, statistically, the, the stock is going to go up. Now, how far up? We don't know. If you're risky, you actually don't have to take this limit order rule in place, and you can just watch the stock. And that really is day trading. You're going to watch the stock until it gets to where you want it to be, and then you sell it. Likewise, if you're shorting the stock, you watch the stock until it falls to a point that you want and then sell it off. But the idea is simple. If you see a green candlestick and today's price is above the green candlestick, it's above the closing price of yesterday, well statistically the stock is going to fall and you can make money that way. That's how easy it is. 
So where do you find green candlesticks and red candlesticks? Simply go to Yahoo Finance, go to the interactive chart, type in whatever symbol, make sure you're using candlesticks, and just dig through. So here we're seeing a red one. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait today as the market opens. We're going to go follow the red candlestick rule. So we have a red candlestick yesterday. And let's say the market price um, of today at open is lower than the closing price yesterday. So let's say tomorrow it's going to open at $77. Now statistically, at some time today, I meant to say today, at some time today, after it opens at $77, it's going to go back up to 77.55. This is, It shows you the closing price right here in this Yahoo Finance chart. It's going to go up to 77.55 at some time during the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy the stock, and immediately after I buy the stock, I'm going to set a limit order to automatically sell the stock back when the stock hits 77.55, which it will inevitably do. So this is an almost 100% safe strategy. And in this case, you're going to make money every day, but you're not going to make a huge ROI, but it's going to be cumulative. Because if you're playing every day, or if you're playing with, uh, let's say you're playing every day on Facebook, and if you don't see it on Facebook, then you follow the rules on another stock. But if you play every day, and you're making some sort of decent ROI each day, and I'll show you how in a minute, then that's going to be cumulative. If you reinvest that, you can grow it really quickly. And we'll see that in a second. But you probably have a question, which is, where do I find the opening price? You're not going to find it here in Yahoo Finance. Um, the best way to do it, one way to do it is you could check Google Finance, but that's a problem. Even though Google Finance is awesome because you can put in all these different stocks at once. We'll put in Apple, we'll put in Facebook, we'll put in Ford, put in uh, VXX, put all those into the portfolio, puts them all in at once and it shows you the price right away. The only problem is that there's a lag in that. So the, this, the price at the moment is not going to be listed here. However, the good thing is you can look at all of them at once. So if you're tracking a lot of stocks, if you have a bunch of red candlesticks on these stocks and you put them in here, you, you can get the price, but a better way for more uh, more immediate updates as to the stock price, and, and MarketWatch is great because it also shows you um, what the stock is going to open at. It has those predictions there. So you type in whatever stock you want. We'll do Facebook. And when the market opens, the market is not open right now, but when it opens, it'll show you exactly where it's at, and you can track it during the day. So that's how you know where it opens. And if it does open lower, we can see that it's probably going to open higher tomorrow, so it's not going to work on this stock. But what you do is you, you simply sift through these stocks on Yahoo. Then you find whether the opening price meets the second criterion. And if it does, you just go to your brokerage and you do this. Go to your online brokerage and right away buy the stock. And right away put a limit order. And you make money pretty much every day. I've prepared a picture here. Um, is an example of one that had this kind of process uh, four days in a row. So let's say here, you saw the red candlestick on the next day, it opened down here at around 70. You buy it at open, and you wait until it touches that candlestick. So we were a little bit below, but in this case, you would want to watch it. You wouldn't put a limit order. You'd watch it until it goes up. It went all the way up to the more than the middle here, and then you can sell it. Here again, we have green, and we're following the other rule. Green and it opens. The opening price on the red candlestick is at the top. The opening price on the green candlestick is at the bottom. So we see that the red candlestick on this day actually opened above the green candlestick. So we would short it and we can make money. It went down eventually. Same here. The green candlestick on this day opened below the red candlestick on this day. You buy it. Sell it. Same here. We just have this fluctuation back and forth and back and forth. And if you're doing this, let's say you're playing on a stock that's 70 bucks, kind of like Yahoo, or kind of like Facebook. If you're playing on a stock that's 70 bucks, and you make $1 per share per day, what you're doing is you're investing enough to make you an ROI of $1 out of the 70 bucks you invested. So that's a 1% ROI, 1.5% ROI. But cumulatively, if you play it every day and you reinvest, you can make a lot of money that way. However, I'm going to tell you, even though this is a great and reliable strategy, there are two main problems that we need to deal with. Problem one 
If you want to play, you need lots of dough. Because if you're playing on, uh, let me give you two more criteria. Criteria on one. Um, criteria, what am I doing? Criteria one, the stock price must be high. You can't play like on a penny stock. It's not going to make you all that much money. Two is you need to play on a stock that's more or less stable. If the stock keeps going up and up and up, then you're going to have a lot of gaps in the stock. I can show you, I can't think of an example right now. Maybe Delta Airlines is an example, but maybe not. If you see a stock that's just dropping, well, even this would be okay. But in some cases, you don't want a stock that's going up for a long time or going down for a long time because you're going to experience like this. If this pattern continued, we see here's the green candlestick. It opens above the green candlestick, but if we shorted the stock, we'd actually lose money here. So you want a stock that's kind of stable. This one's a little bit too volatile. I wouldn't go with this one. So you want a stable stock. You also want a stock that has a high stock price so that each day it goes up around a dollar or so, at least. If you're playing on a stock that only goes up a few pennies per day, you're not going to make that much money. The second is you need lots of dough, because if we're playing with a stock that has a high price, then to buy many shares, you're going to need a lot of money. Let's say um, let's say you want to, okay, here's one, one point. Whenever you buy or, or sell stock, you have to pay commission to your brokerage. Now every brokerage is different. The most expensive is probably like 10 bucks per trade. So that means you need to be making $20 per day. If you're making $20 per day, then your ROI, ROI needs to be higher. So you need to put in, or the, the money you get back from a low ROI needs to be higher. So the money you put in needs to be more than what you would probably imagine. For most day traders, you would need to put in, if you're using this strategy, you would need to put in at least a couple thousand dollars per trade. And some people aren't willing to do that, Others simply don't have the money to do that every day. So that's problem one. Now I'm going to show you how to deal with that problem, but give me a second because there's another problem. Problem two. This is a very time consuming, time sensitive, I'll say. It's a time sensitive strategy. And I just showed how you really have to be right on the market. As the market opens, you've really got to know what the opening price is. You've got to go through your list of stocks to find one that mat matches these uh, trading criteria, the red candlestick and below the candlestick or the green candlestick and above the candlestick. To find those really quickly, you've got to be fast. And more importantly, you've got to wake up when the market opens or before the market opens e even because you need to be looking, making a list of the stocks with certain candlesticks. So it's a very time sensitive strategy. And these two problems could make it so that for you, day trading gaps is not a reasonable strategy. However, I'm going to show you that we don't need to day trade gaps and we don't need lots of dough and we don't need to wake up as soon as the market opens to do a gap trading strategy that makes a lot of money. It makes high ROI. In the following couple videos, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve these two problems. So I'm going to have two more videos after this. One's going to show you how you don't need to put lots of money in to make lots of money back. And the second is going to show you how we don't have to watch the market every day. So stay tuned for the, those next two videos. We will solve these problems and I'll show you how easy and profitable gap trading can be.